all began when the publisher of my second novel, The Fortunate Pilgrim, said, I wish you would have had more of the mafia in the book, it would have sold better. And I thought that was a good idea, so I wrote an outline for The Godfather, and I showed it to him, and he turned it down. And uh, about eight other publishers turned it down. And then Putnam, they never read the outline, but an editor asked me to come up and talk to um, all the editors up there. So I went up there, and I just told them a few mafia stories that I knew. And they gave me an advance and told me to go ahead. So I went ahead and wrote the book. I did the screenplay, the first draft of it, and then contacted Mario, and then the two of us worked on it together and uh, arrived at what was the script that we would use. But it was very, very close to the book, and that was my desire. At the toll booth, of course, was a very vivid scene from the book. I mean, everything from The Godfather, what makes The Godfather movie wonderful, comes from the book. That's why on the title, it, uh, at my behest, it says Mario Puzo's The Godfather, because the book had it all. We wrote separately. He sent his stuff to me, I sent my stuff to him, and he made the final decision on what would be in there. The Godfather 2 was largely almost an original screenplay. It took some of the historic parts out of the book, but all the modern story was sort of I invented. And then later, Mario uh, came, and again, we always worked together. I kind of would do the first draft, and then he would make it good. All the scenes that a flashback about Vito Corleone in the novel, so it was very easy just to pluck them out, you know, and stick them in there. The way Francis did it was great because uh, he had that guy singing on the stage, which he invented, you know, it was very, very effective. What happened was uh, this crazy idea of like, how could we do the young Vito Corleone since A, Marlon Brando by that point didn't want to work with us anymore because they hadn't paid him anything. And I began to have this crazy idea that we could cast another actor to play Marlon Brando as a young part. And of course, I had my eye on, on Robert De Niro, whom I had met in the casting of the first one. In fact, Bobby De Niro noticed I was always looking at him and looking at him. And what I was looking at was that, yes, I saw some sort of relevance that he could play, not maybe Marlon Brando as a young man, but he could play Vito Corleone as a young man. And that was my concept, and that was a very far out concept in those days, and I would not have been able to do it had I not had the power that I had secured by saying no one can have any say over the casting. With that idea, and my idea to tell the story of the father and the son in parallel action, it wasn't really so much flashbacks in my mind, but I'd always wanted to write a screenplay that told the story of a father and the son at the same age, you know, say they were both in their 30s, interrelate the two characters. So that's what I did. I used the subsidy of The Godfather to allow me to write uh, kind of a personal work uh, and collaborate with Mario, taking his material and using my own ideas. And that, that's what, so, uh, that explains the unusual form of The Godfather Part Two. We had a disagreement about killing Fredo. I didn't want Fredo to be killed. Francis was adamant, so I said, okay, but you can't kill him until the mother dies. And he accepted that. Psychologically, I felt that if Michael killed his brother while his mother was still alive, the audience would never forgive him. There were many scripts written for a third Godfather, and uh, none of them, however, involved Al. And I felt that Al was always the main character of the first Godfather, of the second Godfather, and I thought it was crazy to try to make a third one in which he was not. And of course, at that point, it was a very different kind of story. For one thing, it was the resolution of the story. And uh, I, in fact, wanted this, the third movie not to be called The Godfather Part Three. They refused, and I argued, but I didn't have the power that I had the second time around, and so it was released as The Godfather Part Three, whereas it should have been called The Death of Michael Corleone. Because we need a little emotion. If we could put a little emotion, like in three places in the movie, 
Now, on Godfather Three, I worked more closely with Francis than on the other two scripts. We spent a couple of weeks in the Reno Gambling Hotel working on it. It's the unity between the mafia and the church. Again, we were the victims. We want to go from this light to dark to dark to light, and the pomp, the circumstance, and ritual. How can we make an opening that's better yeah. than? The, the wedding, so it just doesn't come a bigger version of part two. Part two was good on the lake and everything, a birthday but birthday party, no, for like paintings and something. Uh, the birthday party, but that can't be big enough to bring really all the. Yeah, bring bring everybody there, into. though. Yeah, that's true. But I think a great irony is that Michael is being awarded a great yeah, religious yeah. honor. Maybe part of the Corleone Foundation has a beneficial link to the. In other words, that the Vatican is going to be included in its yearly gifts. Better still. The blessing of Almighty God. A lot of the scripts Father, for the Godfather sequel Son. that other people wrote were about drug deals and, you know, big uh, the drug cartels and had a lot of, you know, shooting and what have you. And, and I'm sure I went the more uh, kind of unusual way, making it be more a story of redemption and of uh, the kind of going back to the Sicilian roots, but that was what my instinct took me to. I really hope there'll be a Godfather 4 because... I, I, I see it so clearly as something that will really, really work, that it would be in the 1920s that the Sonny, played by Jimmy Kahn, we'd have to find a new Jimmy Kahn, would be the hero, the carrying force of the picture, besides the Godfather. And the Godfather would be more important. And I wrote half the script, uh, and... Uh, De Niro has it, Paramount has it, Francis has it. And I think it would be so perfect for the audience to see the family when Michael was a little kid, makes his christening, how Sonny becomes a murderer, and you know, how the Godfather built up his strength because it shows the rise of the Corleones. Paramount owns the Godfather, and it would be for them to go to Mario Puzo and to commission him to write it, and uh, they know that uh, that uh, he would do it, but they don't make that offer. I think it's such a sure thing, you know. It's like I almost wish. That's one of the few times I wish I had Hollywood power to get a picture made, because I would love to get that picture made.